Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, I'm Alex and this is The Ramble and we go until midnight tonight from the United States of America. Ladies and gentlemen, his name is Larry Bubbles Brown. He lives out there in San Francisco, California, uh, which I hear is a living hell these days, is it not, Larry? <laughs> yes, that's true. I mean, I, you know, I, that's my favorite town in the whole country. I mean, that's where I'm from. I love that city. But you just say, if I went back, I'd probably want to slice my throat, right? Yeah, I don't think you'd recognize it. It's a bunch of new, horrible-looking buildings. There's uh, crime and homelessness down uh, Market Street. No cars are allowed in Market Street anymore. Why? Uh, they want to get rid of cars. Why? <laughs> you know, I mean, let me let me explain this to you. I, I, in fact, the other day I was watching a great documentary about San Francisco called uh, The Way It Was or something like that. And they started talking about San Francisco and the way it was and things that existed that don't exist any longer. And they showed Market Street. And you know what Market Street was absolutely jam-packed with? car uh, transit cars uh, you know yeah. I, they weren't exactly cable cars they had uh, i think they were overheads i can't remember what they were exactly but there were so many of them that people couldn't even cross the street you know and it became a major thoroughfare that's a major thoroughfare you would drive all the way down and it was kind of the the crowning glory was the ferry building at the end of it you know uh and uh um, it was it, that was a place of transportation, but you say no cars now. No cars. Okay, they still have the uh, public transit, uh, the trolley cars. I think the trolley cars. Almost, that's uh, what they no, were called. No yeah. autos. No. Those trolley cars, by the way, used to go to every place in San Francisco. You could tr travel all of San Francisco by trolley car, and I don't think that's true anymore. You know. No, and apparently they used to have a, quite a. Uh, a set of trains that went over the Bay Bridge all over the East Bay, too. Yeah. Well, we lived at Filbert Street, on Filbert Street, and we would go down Filbert Street, my mother and I, and we right at the bottom of Filbert Street, you could catch the cable car that started out of Fisherman's Wharf. You can't do that anymore because there's so many tourists on it that you can't get on them anymore, but at that time, you just, you just jumped on. You know, you could even, I don't know if you can, you could even... Uh, kind of hang on the outside of it. On the, there was a little s step area, and you could just hold on to it and like, it went up the hills because they didn't go very fast, you know. But we no, would, but apparently they were all over the city. Then. No, there were only there were at the, that time there were only two left. There was the one that went over the hill, and the one that went up the hill, uh, and then wound up on Market Street where it then turned around on this turntable and then went back up. And we used to go, my mother used to, we used to take that cable car and we'd go down to Market Street. And Market Street is where all the, the big department stores were, that and in Union Square. And that's what this documentary was about. A lot of the stores that are currently gone, like the most, the fanciest store in San Francisco was a store called... Uh, if you're ready for this, um, it was called um, um, City of Paris. City of Paris, yes. Do you remember the City of Paris? Uh, I, it was when I moved out here. I think it was just starting to close down. What they used to do every year, they used to bring in a giant tree they had felled from somewhere and put it up as a Christmas tree in the middle of uh, this four-story building. And it went all the way up to the top. Uh, and, uh, I mean, you think about Rockefeller Center, that tree is big, 
But this one was almost as big, and it was really? in the middle of this department store. And everybody at Christmas time, my mother included, and we were Jewish, would go down to <laughs> see the Christmas tree at the city of Paris. You know. Yeah. Well, they just I just speaking of Union Square. Let's see, I just read that 17 stores are going out of they're leaving the Union Square area because there's been so much crime and smash and grab. Hmm. things down there so hmm. that's that's kind of a deserted area now well there was another there was another uh a big store there called i magnum i magnum and yeah. i magnum went out of business and it started in something like about the mid 1800s you know gee, long time long time they closed down and then there were stores like gumps uh, i'm trying to remember some of the other names of the stores and these were all fancy department stores. People loved going to, my mother loved going to a department store. And then there was a big place on Market Street called the Emporium. This was the a, Emporium, yeah. this is one of those giant, you know, um, places where there were different departments. They came up with the idea of the department, you know, the shoe department, the dress department, the this department, that, that department. So all these were kind of in the Market Street area, and that's why my mother and I took the sub, the cable car subway. We took the cable car down to Market Street. But you say, what what's on Market Street now? Nothing? I don't think, what, I think the Emporium later morphed into a Nordstrom's. I yeah. think it might still be there. Well, uh, really the uh, city of Paris became Neiman Marcus. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And Macy's is still on Union Square, but a lot, most of the other stores, are, they're getting out of there. Well, Macy's now, is, you know, when Macy's came to San Francisco, my mother went apoplectic because she was from New York. <laughs> no, she was from New York. Oh, my God, Macy's has come to San Francisco. And that was a big deal. I think that was the first store they did outside of New York. Really? Now, today, wow. there's Macy's everywhere. They're owned by Federated. Uh, and it's just kind of a brand name. But in those days, you got a Macy's in San Francisco, and boy, you know, the only thing they didn't have was the parade, you know? So, I mean, it, it, was, it was an amazing thing. And so I remember going with my mother down to Market Street and shopping and so on, and then it fell into disrepair. I know that turned into nothing but porno movie theaters and all of that, and then I think it got better, but now it's, you can't drive a car down it? That's ridiculous. I know. And then you told me that Van Ness Avenue has nothing but tents on it. A lot of tents, yeah, and uh, they took out one of the lanes for buses, so that's, uh, it was crowded with traffic when there was three lanes, and so now it's really bad. Now, so how do you feel about that? Because you're still a San Franciscan. Technically, you're more, I, I always consider myself a San Franciscan, but you're truly still a san franciscan i right? am but i'm very i'm like i'm not anti-car so they're turning all these streets and lanes into bicycle lanes which i hate so yeah yeah well you know we have here in new york that's a real problem we have this uh, uh when we had the uh covid the restaurants weren't allowed to have anybody in them because they're enclosed structures and you know, you could, it was a very easy way to get COVID. Uh, and you, you you couldn't wear a mask and eat dinner. So there was no other way you could handle this situation. So uh, they allowed them to build these shacks outside their, their establishments as places where people could eat. The only problem is a lot of them were enclosed themselves. And so you didn't get the kind of airflow that you should get to make sure you don't get COVID. But anyway, they, they put these shacks out there and they're out in the street, right? And sometimes there are three of them on one street, leaving about one quarter of the block for parking. That's what they did here. And uh, yeah. And well, they, now it, there's no COVID anymore, right? There's it's, no COVID, but they haven't taken those things away. <laughs> those things are still there. And I'm going, well, wait a minute, you're only paying rent on the restaurant, and, and your restaurant's full, okay? And you're not even using that shack. Sometimes Marjorie and I will take a walk, and Marjorie loves looking in them and going, 
I wonder if this one's being used. And you look inside, and there are a couple of rats looking back at you. You know, <laughs> yeah. and 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 the mayor wants to keep these things going. And I'm thinking, that's nuts. It's absolutely nuts. Now you talk about Market Street. You should see what happened. What's happened in Times Square? Broadway's become like a one-lane street because they put in all these these areas where they block them off and put the tables out and things like that. You know. And it's it's not what it was. I mean, come on. The, these are lifebloods of the city. These are yeah. the things that identify a city. You know, it's terrible. Just terrible. So, you know. But so that San Francisco is not very good, huh? No. you got to get out here sometime. we got to do that well, reunion. Well, well you, you said i got to get out there, but then you give me every reason not to get out there. <laughs> Well, you got to see what it's turned into. We can do a little documentary well, film about it. Yeah, Marjorie and I are thinking of doing a lot of traveling. I'm pro- uh, uh, undoubtedly one of the places we got to go is San Francisco. Yeah, you know what my problem is though. I don't. I haven't driven a car. When's the last time I drove a car? God, maybe five, six years ago. Really? Wow. And, I, and I don't know if I'm capable of driving a car anymore. You know. Because to begin with, I'm a, I'm a little loopy from this drug that I take, and and uh, but I've, I'm not that loopy when I'm sitting down. However, but I'm just afraid to drive. I just don't know if I can drive any. I'm sure yeah. if I got you're behind, gonna, you're not going to forget it. So. I'm sure if I got behind the wheel of a car, yeah. I, I'd be able to do it. But I wouldn't be as. I'd be worried about hitting other people. I'd be worried about like my business manager. One day he was driving the car and I think he he hit a bike or something I can't remember what he said he did and it was at that precise moment he said this is the last day I'm ever going to drive and his wife drives him everywhere you know there's a point at which when you get older you go I don't know if I should be driving you know so uh, and, and what I was going to do is I was going to see if I could still drive I told Shecky about this and Shecky owns a car and I was going to I said, can I come out and try your car someday? He said, sure. You know, I'll drive it around the block, and we'll see. I just want to make sure I can still drive. And I never got around to doing it, and, of course, now he's gone, and I can't do it. Um, you still have a license? Me? Oh, yeah. I, I renewed it uh, two years ago, you know, uh, with no restrictions or anything like that. But, you know, I just don't trust myself driving that. Um, so if I go out to California, how do I get around? I guess I can call my pal, uh, Bubbles and he'll drive me. I'll everywhere. drive you. He'll so. drive me everywhere. We'll let you, we'll let you start out. And if it's shaky, I'll take over. Well, the place I can stay is at my business manager's place out in Marin County, but I got to have a car to get out there, you know? <laughs> so it, 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 I, I don't, I don't know how I will get around. You can Uber. Uber. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uber. I don't. I don't use Uber. I use Lyft, uh, and I use Lyft because I, I just like them better. I don't know why. I guess I just hate Uber because it's Uber. But yeah, I don't know if they're uh, they were supposed to. I don't know if those things are going to take off now or not. They're apparently a lot more expensive than they used to be. So your last job was working with Rob Schneider. And yes. How, how did your set go? Oh, I had to do 15 minutes. It's easy. So then I bring him out, and he got he did uh, he did an hour and 40, <coughs> which I thought was a little long, but it was impressive. I'm sneezing. Excuse me, I'm sneezing. I had to close my mic so people wouldn't hear okay. my sneeze. Uh, Hit the sneeze button. Remember the, oh, we, we, <laughs> the no, cough we've, button. We've got it's big pollen season out here. You know. Oh, it's the uh, worst allergy. Everyone's got them out here now. So I mean, I'm the, not alone uh, anymore. Uh, um, a pollen sneeze you can tell from a, from a cold sneeze. There's, they're two different kinds of sneezes. Yeah, the pollen sneeze is very violent. <laughs> it's violent, and I, I sneeze exactly five times. In other words, if I start sneezing, I have to sneeze five times before I can stop. Mm-hmm. So a cold is usually three. Is it? Is that true? Yeah. See, I learned something from you every day of the week, okay? Well, that's what I heard. I don't know if it's true. But <laughs> wow, I never knew that. Wow, I have to do something about that. 
Anyway, so uh, uh, so y- you did okay. You did 15 minutes. Let me ask you, when you do 15 minutes, after all these years, if I told you, okay, get up, do 15 minutes, and you get up and you do 15 minutes, can you do 15 on the button without looking at your watch? Uh, within half a minute, yeah. Within half a minute, you can do yeah. it. See? That's, you know. Um, I I, I kind of got the same way in radio. If somebody told me I had 30 seconds left, mm-hmm. give me a 30-second sign, I, I could pretty well do the 30 seconds to the to the second, you know. Um, because the other day I worked at a, I actually worked a radio show at a radio station. Somebody asked me to host the show because a guy was on vacation. And I love telling the story because it's true. The I asked what the format of the station was, and the person said, "Oh, it's a uh, Christian conservative." <laughs> and I said, "Boy, if you called the wrong guy here, you know, I mean, you're over two. <laughs> I'm Jewish, and I'm a and I'm a lefty, which I have to be because when you're born Jewish, you sign an oath at birth. I will be to the left, uh, and." Uh, I said, you got the wrong person here. And <laughs> they go, no, we, we heard you're really good. We'd like to have you do it. We don't care. Okay? Well, that was open. Yeah. So I went on. I went over there. And there's all this all this Christian iconology around, you know, like a Virgin Mary and this and that. And I'm going, oh, God, do I feel uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> you know. My, if my mother were alive to see this, she'd have to. We'd have to put a stick in her mouth to keep her from swallowing her tongue. That's uh, funny. Yeah. You know, so. Uh, but, well, thirty seconds. You can. Uh, people don't know you can actually say a lot in thirty seconds. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my my mother used to used to literally get apoplectic because when I worked at KTIM in San Rafael, the beginning of my very beginning of my career, there was a show every night at six fifteen. And it was called the Rosary Hour. Now, I don't know if you guys know about this sort of thing, but a lot of markets, the, Christ, the Catholic Church, which really was, in those days, pretty well ruled the roost, you know, um, would have these things called the Rosary Hour for lazy Catholics who didn't want to do it by <laughs> themselves. And they would literally go on and do the Rosary on the radio, and then you could do it along with them with your beads and do the rosary. Well, I was the announcer on the rosary hour. That's hilarious. (laughs) And my mother, who was always very proud of me being in radio, and look at what my son does. He's on the radio, you know. She would always listen to everything I would do. All right? So she tunes in this one night, and I open up the rosary hour. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the Rosary Hour as we reflect in the life of our Lord and His most blessed mother. <laughs> wow. And now, here's Father so-and-so. <laughs> well, my mother, when I came home, went, How can you do that? Oh You're God. a Jew. I said, I'm getting paid for it. She says, Oh, okay. So <laughs> I, never, <laughs> I never heard this story. Though. That's great. Yeah. yeah and I, it's funny that I can still almost remember that opening. You know what I can also remember the opening of? I used to have to introduce the Portuguese voice of Marin. I know that sounds strange. But there was this guy, his name was Agnello Clementino. And he bought like 45 minutes a day, right? With his own advertisers and stuff like that. And he would come in and do 45 minutes in Portuguese. But I had to introduce him. So you know, it's time now for the Portuguese voice of Marin with Agnel, Cle, Agnello Clementino. Boa tarde, Clementine, or Ag, Agnello. And uh, Boa tarde. Uh, so the only Portuguese I've ever learned. But that was another show that I had to announce. Wow, the early years. I was very lucky. You know, this radio station was one of those last radio stations that did everything. You know, they did the Portuguese voice. Marin. They had a, a black show on it uh, that came from oh, our studio in Richmond. Uh, and uh, I'm trying to remember what it, it was called now. 
and then the, we had the the rosary hour and things like that. But what it did, and then there was also a man on the street program, where uh, my boss used to have a microphone hooked up to the Rexall drugstore, and then they went back to the radio station, and he would stand there out in the middle of the street talking to people as they walked man by. Man on the street. <laughs> and occasionally, I would have to do it. And this was not an easy task because, believe it or not, you got a microphone. You're standing on 4th Street in San Rafael, and it's not like everybody wants to talk to you. In fact, they'd like to completely ignore you. They walk by with their hand to their face. You know, they don't want you to talk to them. And my boss learned a technique of taking the microphone cord and wrapping it around people's feet. So, so they'd have to stop and talk to him. <laughs> so this kind of education in broadcasting was invaluable. It's where I learned how to do everything. How oh, to that's, play uh, record, great for interviewing, yeah. Interviewing, doing uh, uh, you know this thing, that thing, uh, uh, having to uh, play music. Um, I did a show on Saturdays called Teen Time in which this radio station actually let me play rock and roll. Uh, and, I mean, it was a great education. That And, and people don't get that education. They, they go to college and they get that education or try to, you know. But I learned every aspect of broadcasting by the time I walked out of there. But, uh, he might make a good documentary film. Yeah, but it's, you know, it, it, again, this was radio back in the day. And this is when people... This, this guy owned the radio station. He and the Independent Journal, the newspaper, uh, owned part of it as well. And uh, he just ran this station. He, was a t he had terrible taste. I mean, to him, Lawrence Welk was a god, you know. And, uh, but, but he did do all kinds of different he types of He had everything, of yeah. Every it type sounds of more entertaining than the radio we have here and now. So. Well, the radio we have here and now, is it, 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 forget it doesn't even exist you know i mean people are saying why is it they don't want to put fm or am radios anymore in cars well maybe it's because am radio sucks yeah <laughs> you know? maybe it just isn't relevant any longer you know everybody went to fm because it sounded better than am sounded and that's what happened with that you know so i mean it it it, 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 as I tried to explain to somebody the other day, I think it was somebody who called me on the show I was doing over an AM station, oddly enough. And I said, you know, times change and the things we do change and the things we, uh, how we disseminate material changes. I mean, you've got the internet now. Granted, I don't think it's as good as radio was. Because especially when I grew up, radio tried to entertain you. They did these shows. There was the Jack Benny show, Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy and so on. But that's long past. And then we went into music radio and talk radio and things like that. And now we have the Internet and people infinitely. I mean, I, I'm hooked on YouTube. I, you wouldn't know what I'm talking about because, you know, you don't have the Internet yet. I've seen it. <laughs> you see, does your building have it? Yes, I'm very close to getting high speed internet. Well, why don't you do it? Damn it! I will. What's your <laughs> what's gonna... your what's your problem? <laughs> then once you get that, have you got a, have you got like a desktop computer? Yes. Is it fairly new? I think it's fairly up to date. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, then in that case, we could actually start seeing you for these things. I don't think it has a camera, though. Uh, well, I'll buy you a camera, okay? I'll buy me a camera. <laughs> I'll buy you a camera. You know? Uh, I, in fact, i got dozens of them around here I'm not even using. Okay? I'll okay. get you a camera, okay? And then we can finally see you instead of running a, uh, a, a bumper slide that's animated. Yeah. You know? I don't know if you've ever seen the program and seen you on it, but it's just a, a still, it's a picture. Mm -hmm. That's what I figured, yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. But now mm -hmm. we, could, we could see you, and I don't think anybody will be disappointed in how you look. 
Well, this still makes it more seem like radio to me. That's why I like it. I yeah, guess. well, yeah, but but they can go on uh, YouTube and see any number of times that you know your all your appearances on Letterman and uh, times you've been on stage. I mean, there's a lot of Larry Bubbles Brown on YouTube. I don't know if you know that. I'd hate to hate to see it. Yeah, oh my God. See, see, there you go. There you go. Well, you got a face for radio, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, listen, you know, again, we've come to the close of yet another fine, wonderful <laughs> fine. Uh, day, of broadcasting. day of broadcasting here at the Larry Bubbles Brown Alex Bennett Radio Network. Uh, and uh, uh, you playing anywhere we should know about? I got nothing for a while. Okay, so, so he's got nothing, so you just have to hear him here. Yeah. Uh, say goodnight, Larry. Good night, Alex. Good night, Larry. That's Larry Brown. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Yeah, there goes Larry. I love him, and I love talking to him. I tell you how I love talking to him. Every time I, I go to record him, I say to myself, do I really, do, am, am I going to do him? Is he going to be okay? You know, are we going to be able to get through uh, a couple of 25-minute uh, um, segments? And we always do. It just goes, flies by, just flies by. Well, I hope it was the same for you. Now, we have somebody here that I think is just who we think it is. But because of that, I'm going to bring him in right now and see. And if it isn't him, then we know everything's fine. Okay, no, I'm going to cancel that. I want to admit him. Okay, let's see if it's who I think it is. If it is who he is supposed to be, let me see here. Uh, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay, now I can admit everybody else. All right. Uh, yeah, I didn't know whether that was you or not, Brian, because you uh, you were using a slightly different name today. It's Cinco de Mayo. Oh, it's Cinco de Mayo. So that's why you use the name El Briano. Well, congratulations. I'm fucking hilarious. On May the 4th, you didn't call yourself Darth Brian. <laughs> Next year, I will remember. N Next year, remember. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hello to uh, Jeff, and hello to uh, J Josh Wheeler. Hello. And uh, hello to uh, everybody. Um, good to see you all. Uh, mm -hmm. Let me see here. What was I going to say? Uh if you come to California, you will not have to drive. We will drive you around. You will drive me around? I see. Yeah. Okay. I will be your Uber. I'll take the week off, and I'll be your Uber. We can go around and yell at everybody. And yell at everybody, right. Well, we may be getting out there in a while. You know, I may take a couple of months off here. I, I don't know, and go traveling. You can do the show from here. One night, you know. Well, I can I can do a show to a certain extent, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's right. Yeah, you have all the hookups and everything, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I, you know, I can do it off of an iPad, for instance, mm -hmm. you know. But anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll see. I'm, I've got to, I got to figure that one out. But I've got to take my wife on a vacation. So anyway, I've got a little surprise for you. Look at the shirt I'm wearing. Isn't that nice blue? But let me show you what it is, okay? All right. Does anybody know what this is? Yeah, huh? camel. That is the first station I was working at. In San Francisco, KML. So yeah. I found a place that was selling those T-shirts. So, oh wow! So I bought one. They don't have any for my other radio stations, but the hell with it, you know. Huh. What the hell? Uh, and uh, let's see here. Okay, Vernon Nunn is joining us as well. Uh, looks like we'll have a nice group of people here. Uh, but uh, uh, anyway, so. Uh, it is, it is, uh, yeah, it still is, uh, Cinco de Mayo. Do you celebrate Cinco de Mayo? Do you go out and have a margarita, any of you? No, no but in San Jose, they block off all of the exits on the freeways right around now because they don't want anybody cruising. So, <laughs> so they had a Sharks game in the playoffs when they were in the championship round about five, six years ago. 
and my friend and I went to the game and we got on the freeway and we're just trying to get off into our exit and we had to go like five miles up, get off that exit and take the back streets home. So my friend was drunk, hanging out the car. He's yelling at everybody, take mommy's car home. She's calling. She wants it back. <laughs> so. so why do they do this? Why, why, why are they? Because everyone goes, all the kids go cruising, you know, San Jose. Everybody likes to cruise, so everybody's downtown with their parents' car. Oh wow, wow! So so they block everything off, so you can't get off the off the you know go off the ramp to get to the cruising area. Do so, people oops. still cruise their cars? They just made it legal to cruise your car again this last summer. So they had a huge thing. One of the supervisors said there's not the no cruising zones anymore. So because everybody's, you know, all the guys with the nice cars are older now, have families. So, you know, it's it's a different crowd now. But then you have all the kids and the Chargers and Challengers. I mean, who, you know, when I was a kid, you had hot rodders, you know, these kids who juiced up their 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 old cars mm -hmm. and made them go super fast. I mean, American Graffiti really was something that actually existed right. in, in, in Marin. Um, and now, you know, now it's sideshows. Yeah. The now, idiots do donuts and pick off people and, while they do donuts in the intersections. Why do they do donuts? It only eats they're up idiots. it only eats up their tires. They burn up their tires till they're down to their rims and then they start throwing sparks. They're they're dumb shit. <laughs> oh, you're just an old fart. And, how did the, and Alex, how did the hot rodders start? How did they start? What is their origin? They well, were burning out. Well, no, what you're thinking of is that it was probably uh, 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 bootleggers. No. Well, that part. But, that, the, but that's where that's how NASCAR started. Right. right. Was but the California hot rod scene was a lot of the guys coming out of the service. Okay. They used to work on cars and they started working on cars and modifying and making the hot rods, getting all the old parts from the early cars and making hot rods. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. So, cruising the El Camino. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, I mean, I, I every culture seems to have had a certain car thing going for it. Yeah. Although I don't, I, you know, of course, I'm an old guy now. I don't know from cars, right? I can't. I'll take it. We'll go some side shows when you come. Yeah, I, I have to have somebody like Brian drive me around, you know. <laughs> Boy, am driving I feeling Daisy. old. What? Driving Mr. Daisy? Well, actually, I think I probably could drive, okay? We don't want you to drive. Please don't drive. <laughs> but I get, I, lately, I get lightheaded a lot, you know? Uh, and it may be from the medicine I take or whatever, but I get lightheaded. And I'm just afraid of driving a car and then getting, like, really lightheaded. I, you know, I want to have my wits about me when I'm driving. Yeah, you know, and, you know, the worst... The worst the worst thing about driving is everybody else. Well, I drive yep. to Lodi almost, you know, one and a half, two hours there. So three hours at least a day. And even today, I'm going around a corner, a you know, slow bend in the freeway. Man, this guy starts drifting. And I look over and he's got a cell phone up. It's like, yep. oh, my God. All day long. Well, uh, sh my friend Shecky quit driving altogether. And the reason he quit driving was because he... Um, um, uh, uh, he said, the people out there are just crazy. He said, I just don't want to drive anymore. Uh, so he had his friend drive him everywhere, you know, uh, because he just couldn't take it anymore. And my business manager, who's admittedly he's 84 now, but he stopped driving because one day he, uh, he hit a bike or something that somebody was mm -hmm. riding on. Didn't hurt the person, but it scared him enough that he said, I'm through. That's it. I'm not driving anymore. I'm going to take myself off the road. And his wife drives him around, you know. Yeah. What, is somebody going to say something? I do the same thing. Really? Yeah. You don't drive anymore? No, I drive occasionally where I like to go. Where like I know. Parking lots? But it's, no, you know, down to the stores that are. I don't know if I can, I don't know if I even know how to parallel park anymore. I used to be the greatest parallel parker in the world. I could get into spaces now, where there was no space. Now cars will do it for you. Yeah, yeah well, you're right. You come to California. You come to California. We'll take you to San Francisco. I got an 18 foot van that you learn with the mirrors how to parallel park, and you can practice all you want. No, but I I used to be a great parallel parker. I just you know. 
But I, I, I do these cars actually work the parallel park for you? Yeah. Yeah, you pull up next to it like you work in a parallel park, and then there's a little square, and the square will match up to the gap that it sees, and you push a button, and it'll swing it back, and just go slowly. Yeah. I it mean, do, do you have to do anything, or you just sit there while it parks itself? Just sit there while it parks itself. <laughs> really? Yeah, my legs got that, yeah. And then it's so tight, you can't get out. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. You know. But, I mean, I, uh, I, I, I was very good at it. I mean, I had a whole whole system that I learned when I first learned how to drive that was f literally f uh, foolproof. You just, you know, you pull up directly where your your window and your uh, your window is equal to the other car mm -hmm. that you're going back of, and then you just do the turn in, and you're fine. Yeah, actually, your back axle, yeah. Yeah, so, you I know. I mean, parallel park a semi. What? Oh, that's tough. I could parallel park a semi. Oh boy, probably with doubles, huh, Kevin? Ain't no, none to it. No, no, oh, huh? <clears throat> no. You can't do that with doubles. I don't no. care who you are. Yeah, I can uh, back doubles. That's yeah. that's just saying enough there. But... <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, because so. I had to do it in a truck rodeo a couple of times. Uh -huh. Yeah, my arm is still killing me from the oh, shot really? yesterday. Ah. Yeah, yeah. It took two days for my arm to feel better. Yeah, how about you in particular? I mean, I feel still feel a little loopy. You know? I didn't feel loopy at all this time. The other five shots, I felt loopy. Yeah, and by the way, I got my shot the day that uh, the UN said, or whoever it is, the, the, the World Health Organization, <laughs> said it's it's no longer a problem any longer. Yeah. You know? yeah, and then the, then the FDA came out with a warning today saying, there's a 20% chance uh, that we're going to see co uh, Omicron uh, like it w first hit again. So, yeah, which, but the current the current uh, shot is good against Omicron, right? Yeah, four and five. So if it mutates, well, how about six? It then it won't be a per well, then it won't be a perfect match, but it should still keep you out of the hospital and from dying and stuff. Oh so. boy, I'm so sick. Who knows? You know, they've lowered everything. I mean, there's no plastic barriers around here. Nobody's wearing a mask, even in, in my medical facility. The doctors and nurses are, you know, but a lot of the other people, they can't make them because they lowered the the thing in California. And I mean, that's so stupid. You know, when you go to foreign countries, what what is, I'm, I'm getting like, uh, I'm getting a, a feedback here, a slap back. Let me see if I can. No, oh, it's still there's still got a little problem here. Uh, let me see. Okay. Anyway, um, no, but I. Um, uh, uh, what was I going to say now? Or foreign countries like oh, yeah, when we go to yeah. Vietnam be, before COVID, Vietnam a lot of people wore masks. No, in China, they mm -hmm. wore masks anytime they got a cold. Well, mm -hmm. the smog is so bad in China. Well, no, it, it had nothing to do with the smog. It had to do oh. with with if you had a cold. You wore a mask because you didn't want to give it to other people. Yeah, we're not we don't have that kind of social mentality in this country anymore. We don't care about our fellow man, as it were. And all mm -hmm. the mask did, the mask didn't really protect you as, as, much, as much as it protected other people. Right. You know? And uh, we just can't get used to that. And I just think if you get a cold, wear a mask. Hell, you got 8,000 of them at home now. You know. The only thing I could think of when I saw all those, the high school girls with all the masks on in Vietnam is, I feel sorry for the guys because they can't even see the girls, which girls are cute. Until oh, they... stand by, folks. <laughs> Here he comes. Wait a Bill minute. Meyer. Oh, my God. Come on. This, it's no Phil Friday, I thought. No, it's... It, it's it, yeah, well, he, he usually come. He's been coming on on... Uh, on um, what Thursdays, mm -hmm. Phil? What? Uh, oh, I I just uh, started. What, what What did you ask? <laughs> we were just asking. And they said we thought it was a No Phil Friday, and I said usually he calls on Thursdays. Uh, well, yeah, Wednesdays or Thursdays, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So why are you calling tonight? Uh, I'm trying to give you a blessing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's fine. 
Anyway, so uh, but where, where where was I? So that that's whatever you know. I mean, it, we. I um, think that they the World Health Organization is a little premature. Yep. Okay. In yep. in saying don't you know we we don't have to consider it a problem. It still is a problem, and they've even said as much. They said, well, we're doing away with it being a. A, they didn't say it wasn't a problem. They said it just wasn't a, it, what's the term they Health read? emergency. Health emergency. So, you know, watch it come then, come back. What are you going to say? Yeah, there, there's a lot of people at work that still wear, wear masks. And, it's and you know, I've talked to a couple people that I know that wear masks. And I, they, cause they tell me that because they have, you know, their parents are living with them. Or they have a relative, you know, that they see their grandparents they see or somebody. Yeah. So they want to protect them to make sure everything's okay. So yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, it 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 it. it, it, it I just think that we shouldn't have you know gotten rid of it this early. And Biden even said it's no longer a problem. I love the chair behind you, Brian. It's moving on its own. What do you mean? Oh, oh, oh! Because there's there's somebody moving the chair. Oh, isn't that <laughs> clever? Oh, yeah, the chair. Oh. There's nobody in the chair. Oh, wait a minute. I know, and it's moving. Is she on the floor? The is that where she is? What yeah. Is, her guys. This is that new game we're playing called Where's Adrian? <laughs> I love I, how I, the chair's moving with nobody in it. In my chair. In my own. What'd she say? Oh, that's she so said steady. her iPad died. See, I'm I'm supposed to be the magical wizard that like charges her iPad when it's dead already. Mm. Haven't you taught her to her how to charge her iPad? Yeah, she doesn't. Yeah, that's a very good thing. One of these days, you'll wish that you could charge that iPad again. <laughs> yeah. Let, let me see here. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Don't you know, Adrian? Adrian, don't you know how to how to charge an iPad? Yeah. Well, then go that charge it. Do you know what that number is up on the top? That number when it goes down? Do you know what that is? Yeah, it's just uh, I can't see when I'm playing. Oh, because she's playing so I much. I can't see can't when I'm playing. Oh, yeah. okay. It doesn't go It'll away. I had to take my daughter. Take it into the hot tub. What games do you play, Adrian? What games do you play? Roblox. Tell him that he's asking. What game? Roblox. Robots. Roblox. Roadblox. Roadblocks. Like your character, and you can go, they have all these different apps you can go into, all different games and stuff. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. Adrian, it charges better when your daddy does it. Just let him know that. Oh, it charges oh, better when he does oh, it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you get a much better charge. Okay. Go. Yeah. Go. Right. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you're really good at that. <laughs> you know, she really <laughs> listens to you. Now she's hitting you. Oh, well, I think when he comes back, there's not going to be a kid there. Uh, it's Stinko de Mayo. It's Stinko de Mayo? Stinko de Mayo. Cinco. Oh, Cinco. Five. I thought you said Stinko. De May. So anyway, uh, let me see here. Oh, did you see the latest video of, uh, of Donald Trump in his no. deposition? I have never seen anybody as stupid in my life as this man, didn't the thing to say that he didn't do it and he has no, no but then he went on to crazy. say, but you know, uh, it's okay if you, if you pat, pat him on the, on the pussy or whatever he and said, again. You know, it, it, it's okay. It, especially if you're a star and then they well, asked I, him, I, I heard that one about, they asked Steph him, are you stuff. a star? And he said, Oh yeah, I'm a star. Yeah. <laughs> He's got a star on the uh, walk of uh, walk of fame. Uh, well, as uh, some of the time he's got a star on the walk of fame. Yeah. Most of the time they go and dig it up in the middle of the night. Doesn't matter. He's still a star. Oh, I they, see. They built a little cage around the star on the walk of fame. You know how you get, you, to get used to. You know how you get a star on the walk of fame. Buy it. Buy, Buy it. it. Buy it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Hey, when you come here, let's get you a star. We'll all pitch in. Yeah, yeah. Right yeah. With the radio thingy. I bet I could. You know. I bet you could. But you pay for it. You got to pay. It's like uh, thirty thousand dollars, I think. Oh, we got Phil and Alan. They'll, hey, they'll write a check. Out. Cut a check. That's all. Yeah, no problem. No problem. <laughs> yeah. 
Anything? We'll let Brian dig the hole in the concrete. He's good. They take uh, gabnet, gabnet bucks. <laughs> uh, no, but I mean, yeah, I, I, I get together. I'll scrounge together the thirty thousand dollars, and I'll give it to them, and they'll have to give me a star on the Walk of Fame. You know. By the way, did you see what about the? Uh, did you see about the? Uh, the uh, why? It, what is that noise I'm getting back today? I'm getting slap back. Is what I'm getting. Uh, let me see here. No, it's still there. It's still there. Turn it down and back up. It's like okay. chatter. It's like chatter. Yeah. But, man, eh, what the hell. I give up on this whole thing. You know, I'm so, so sick of having to get things working all the time. I got know? my sixth shot yesterday. Yeah, I, I got my sixth shot yesterday. Oh, yeah? Oh. It looks like they missed, Phil. I, yeah, I got COVID last month. Uh, so that's why they said it's over. You know, once Phil gets it. I don't no think they're supposed to give you that shot till two months after you no longer have three, COVID. The, the CDC says three months. Really? The vaccine won't won't protect you. Uh, it was March first that I uh, that I well, tested. It's, it's well, two that's months. two that's two months ago. Yeah. Well, and I had my previous booster in November, so well, uh, you know they knew I had COVID because they gave me the Paxlovid, so. No, but they didn't know it. They didn't. They ask you in the pre-screening that you fill out. Uh, have you had it in the last three months? Nope. Really? It's Kaiser. They asked me, and I got it. Monday. Well, it's Kaiser. That that a answers my question. <laughs> did I did I tell you guys about what happened with my with my uh, uh, with that place I went to for the blood and cancer cancer and blood specialists? Yeah, yeah, it, I, it, I, I, think I heard it. Uh, every, every, I don't know if it was this show or the previous. Every one. ounce of blood out of me, they got. They got. They they tried me three times, and they finally got blood. Okay, now <laughs> you'd think if they're the bl cancer and blood specialists, that they would. The first thing they'd be good at is drawing the blood, right? Wrong. No, but anyway, he, tell, he tells me when he when I saw him, he says, "I'll I'll call you and, and let you know how how the blood tests turn out." Never heard from him. Never heard from him until this week I get a call from his office it's his assistant who says uh, uh, doctor the doctor would like you to come in for a uh, routine a routine uh, follow-up I'm going routine follow-up to what this you know. is a hematologist yeah a routine follow-up and I said to no, her I, I said Listen, I said, you guys never called me. I said, look at look at all the tests you did. And she says, yeah, they, they did every test possible known to mankind. They even did blood tests that don't exist yet, including getting some mosquitoes to drop by and take a little bit of blood out of you too, you know. But anyway, she said, oh, well, the reason he didn't call you is there was nothing wrong. And he only calls you if there's a problem. I said... And then you charge me five thousand dollars for that. The le How many of you have doctors? And after you have a, you get a, you get a blood test, or you get some kind of stuff where he looks at you. Then afterwards, they either calls you or writes you. What is all that chatter, boy? This is terrible. I think it has to do with uh, with uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, I think it's a problem with. Uh, Zoom started when Phil joined. Yeah, uh, now it seems to be. Hey, okay. I turned off the uh, the um, thing as uh, the browser as soon as I. Yeah, no, on. no, we're fine now. Now it seems fine. Anyway, the thing is that you know I, every doctor I've ever had, if they they take blood tests, I get the results. They send me the results. There it is again, the chatter. Alan but, and I have Kaiser, and we Kaiser. have a program. Yep. That as soon as you take a test and the test becomes uh, up and running, they give you the results. No, yeah, I have that over at, at yeah. Mount Sinai. It's called my yeah, chart. That's good. Yeah. You know, and I can get the results immediately. Yeah, but I, the only way I found out about all these blood tests he took, I went on my uh, Medicare account. And it showed that he had claimed the money 
like three days later, <laughs> right? And it was five thousand dollars. That was the asking price. Yeah. Well, that was the asking price. He actually got twelve hundred, but five thousand. If let me put it this way: if I didn't have Medicare and I didn't have insurance, right? How much would I be paying? Zero. No. Well, because uh, yeah, and then I get bad credit, <laughs> but I'd be required to pay the five thousand. You know, so I mean, I consider it. I mean, but it was for like less than an hour that I was there. You know, and he, he felt my glands, and he just looked at the thing. He says, "I'll get back to you if there's any." You know, and he never got back to me. And the reason she said he never did was because he doesn't get back to people when there's nothing to get back to them on. That well, sucks. Yeah, oh. that does suck. It hmm. does suck. So I'm thinking. Yeah, I'm they th leave you wondering what's going on. Well, you know, he is on something like uh, what, what's that? What's that thing where people review doctors? Yeah, and I'm okay. thinking of going there and writing a big long description of what went on, and then ultimately they had the colossal gall to call me and tell me to come for a follow up. Vital and, Signs is one of those websites. Really? Yeah. Uh, but, but I mean, but huh? even if <clears throat> even if your your tests are good. You know, you should want you should have the right to look at them because let's say something's trending upward, you know, and he looks at it and says, oh, you're still in the spec there because, you know, Kaiser has, you know, from one to five, you're supposed to be in there. So what if you're one and then you get to a two, then you get to a three and you're going to a four? You see that. And the doctor says, oh, well, you're fine. You're still under five. But if you're trending different, you may well, you, want you, to yeah. go in for a checkup. Or you something. can even be slightly out of that range and they're not concerned with it. You know, yeah, it could no, just but be Ryan's right. Yeah, uh, but it, you know, it could just be the testing. Right. But, you know, just a little bit, you know, but the point was that uh, uh, I went on to Medicare and I looked at it and showed me every test they did. I, I even have it sitting over here. It's like four pages of tests mm -hmm. that he all did in-house, by the way. So who gets the money when they do it in-house, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And uh, they did it in-house, but there were no results there. Just the fact that they took the test, you know. I don't think they can post the results because of HIPAA. I think they could. It, uh, uh, I, on Medicare? Well, it's a, I, well, I don't think that's where I would go to get the results, but they could, put no, the, no, they but could have their own they, website where I could go and get right, those but, results. But Medicare wouldn't post the results. And, and my doctor, my doctor recommended this guy, my neurologist, because there was something, he took a blood test and was a little bit off and so on. He sent me over to these people. And I said, why aren't you sending me to the Mount Sinai hematologist? Mm -hmm. You know, because at least there, if they did 500 tests, I'd be able to go online and get the results of them. Mm -hmm. You know, just ridiculous, just horrible, just horrible. So, you know, but the hematologist at Mount Sinai a while back wouldn't see me because they said, we looked at your, at your tests and there's nothing wrong with you. You know, you don't have cancer. We're, we can't deal with it. Didn't you get a delay result from those guys too? No. Uh, oh, for one reason or another, I didn't think they, those guys were, the first set of guys were calling you back. No, the first set of guys, I, the nurse called me back and said they, they looked at your charts that were sent over by the emergency room. That's where all this stuff was done. The emergency room, and they looked at them, and they just said there's nothing there to indicate that you, they, that they could see you, that they could, you know, see you and there was any reason for you to deal mm -hmm. with them. Um, so I, I got that. So I should have just taken that as gospel and not gone to these other guys. But, you know, so I'm getting rid of my neurologist, too. I think he's flaky, you know, sending me to this con artist. Well, the hematologist is probably his brother-in-law. Yeah, well, you know, they, all these hematologists are also oncologists. Yeah. And you know why? Because most blood-related problems are cancer. Mm. Yeah. So. Diabetes. Well, there's diabetes, too. You know. Diabetes is not a blood-related problem. But with, with your diabetes, do you go to a hematologist? No. Uh, your regular doctor. I go to Kaiser, so I, I guess well, I, I go to the butcher. You go to doctor-assisted suicide. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, you know... Uh, Diabetes has to do with how the red blood cells carry the glucose and things like that. So I, I would imagine it has something to do with this it. This is pancreas. In your stuff. case, it's in a bucket. Yeah, really. 
Yeah. What did you say? Pancreas? Yeah, yeah, pancreas is not making enough insulin. Oh, pan- well, sometimes it's and making... That has insulin nothing insulin to do with the resistant. hematologist, Bill. It's okay, though. Uh, you're, you're insulin resistant. That's that's the biggest problem with diabetes. But it's still not that your blood it, it, you know, carries the, the, the sugar and stuff so they can test it. But the blood itself is not at fault. No. Well, hey, the, his blood isn't at fault if he has cancer. Either. The only results I got were the result, the immediate results they got while I was there. And she said I didn't have anemia. But I had a low platelet count. But that could have been their testing. I could go somewhere else and the platelet count would go up. You know? Do you normally have low platelets? I've had low platelets, but I've then gone a week later to, the, to like Quest and had it done again. And it went up to normal. Yeah. You know, so I mean, platelets is something that could go everywhere. But and your blood, you cut your finger, your blood clots, your platelets are fine. I, yeah, my blood clots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've had low platelets for years, and my doctor changed the way they do the test at Kaiser to a different test, and my platelets are normal. Yeah, so it's it, it's a variety of things here. But anyway, so that that was what well, happened with that you, doctor, Alan. and it just. You know, it made me realize that we're living in a day and age where you can't even trust your doctors. You know? There's a spill again trying to make jokes that nobody's laughing mm. at. I didn't hear it. Good. Uh, I forgot what I said. It was an insult to Alan. Was it? Yeah. No, How no dare you smiled. insult Alan? He's now yeah. he's now the producer oh, of, right. the, uh, of, <laughs> of the Jack Bishop program. That's right. <laughs> How's that going? I, like, I don't know. I have no idea what to do yet. Jack's supposed to get, you know, he takes his time. And, you know, I expect about five months from now we'll start talking. Alan, when I was Alex's producer, he actually got me paid. Are you getting paid? Oh, no. Oh, that's good to know. I'll have to ask Jack for that. Yeah, I got a check from Century Broadcasting. Who is the best person no, you got on the show? Century Broadcasting, you were in here earlier. There we go. Oh, thank you. Oh. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, who was the best person Did, I got on the show? By the way, you know who drew I that? At, you know who drew that I, camel? You know who drew that? Yeah, camel? your cousin. My cousin's husband. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, Victor Muscovy. I used to have one of the belt buckles. Who's the guy that used to sell the they camel? Had, yes. Camel stuff. Yeah, I yeah. don't know. I I think I may still have one of those belt buckles somewhere. Yeah. You know. But yeah, they, I don't know what happened to mine. They were great uh, bell buckles. So the camel stuff gave me one. Yeah, yeah. So who was the best person you ever booked on? Oh, uh, well, I didn't do it very long until he got a regular producer. But the thing was, I got him an arm wrest. Uh, I got him a woman bodybuilder, and uh, they arm wrestled on the air. You remember that one? No. Uh, Look, I, I don't remember you. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> You're lucky. You know, uh, and uh, so anyway, yeah, I I, I got him a hey, Alan. Uh, Alan, that's your bar, okay? That's the bar. <laughs> that's, you got to reach that uh, bar, okay? Uh, arm wrestler, <laughs> better than yeah, a arm wrestler. Alex, Alex, the way he interviewed her, they arm wrestled on the air, and he made it sound like uh, like it was visual. The uh, grunting. He, he did. You know, it was actually fun. Well, I always okay. consider radio like it was visual. Yeah, and you, yeah. and when you did the interview, you you made it, uh, you know, you made it happen. You mean those screeches of pain? No, those were real. <laughs> I, I I don't remember if you beat Thank her. Thank you not. so much for bringing a lady wrestler into the studio. So anyway, <laughs> you know, I did. Um, um, let me see here. Uh, now I see why you Josh. got rid of him as a producer. Jesus, J- Josh. Yeah, Clarence Thomas. <laughs> oh boy, it just doesn't get any better, does it? I know. It's his wife's the problem. Yeah, Ginny's the best. Let let Josh yeah. talk here. Oh, Ben no. said he's a crook. Yeah. Josh, not getting any better. Yeah, I mean today yeah. every day it's another thing. It's a you know. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah. Now there's no law against what he did, right? Well, I don't know. I mean, you know, it, uh, some of that depends. I mean, there are certain laws, maybe, you know, uh, for things of value that are given to you, perhaps. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm not sure the exact circumstances. I've heard some of the 
the edges of this being discussed. I mean, you know, there there are some things, you know, I don't think you can just give away without penalty, et cetera. Mm -hmm. You know, it just depends. I mean, uh, and in his case, I mean, the non-disclosure, um, I don't know, you know, some of that stuff's pretty complicated, so I don't know all the details on it, but I mean, he knows that it's supposed to be disclosed, and you know, it hasn't been, and they also know that they also know a lot about what they were doing is incorrect because, you know, there's even some information out there, I guess, where some of the people that were giving it to them were caught taking steps, telling other people to to hide it or remove their names from it or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, because they know that it's it's wrong. I, I mean, I'm not, I don't know that it's a an absolute crime, but they knew that it was wrong and that it was improper. Right. You know, everything that's improper is not necessarily illegal, right? You know, but they knew that it was improper, and then now they have this excuse that doesn't fly where they just say, well, we just didn't want anyone to know because, you know, they're private people and people will gossip. And, and so, yeah, of course they will. Why do you think they would? Because they would see it and they would say that that's improper. That's Well, they say... You know, gossip is when, like, you say... Hey, did you hear Alex told Kevin that Patrick is weird? And I mean, that's gossip. Gossip is not, hey, did you hear that someone paid someone off book $25,000 to do something and they don't want anyone to know about it? That's not gossip. That's, you know, information. Good reporting. Are you talking about the property or did they find something else out? Uh, There's, I heard some more about... These same people have paid for the private schooling of some family members of his that he was uh, raising at his own. And then there's another thing. Because I know that the, when they came out with the property thing, there there is I don't know if it's a guideline or a law that yeah, reports a thousand dollars or more. Yeah, I, I mean, it's a law or a guideline. You, certainly, when you get into big ticket things like real estate and stuff like that, I mean, you can't always just give stuff to people i mean yeah. there are and there's a written you know, there's a written thousand dollar mark that they have to report yeah and i don't know if that's technically called a law or a guideline what yeah i mean he's he, what pres- oh, i'm sorry you know, he's he's clearly not following either way something's there you know what what he needs to and i think you know each day, you know, look, Congress moves really slow. We all know that. It, it takes it takes a lot to get things done. But each day, you know, even both parties are starting. But it's to just every that. day there's something new. You know, there's some new thing about where he got money from this guy. Well, yeah, you yeah. know, and who knows how what other money he got from other people? We don't know about that. Yeah, and you know, both parties are moving toward. Um, you know, starting to understand that disclosures and some rules and things like that, uh, very much the same as to what Congress members are held to themselves, you know, are are probably required. And they also understand they have the power to do it if they need to. Um, it would be nice if the court would do it themselves, you know, because I think that would be a good move of integrity to happen. Right. But if it's not going to, then, you know, I I think each side is slowly starting to understand that, you know, that they've let it go on long enough. And I'm sure even some of the, you know, more stupid ones understand that, you know, two years from now or whatever, this, this same exact scenario could come up with, you know, a justice that they don't like or something on the opposite side of their thinking, and what are they going to do then, you know? I mean, they would... Oh, oh, if this had been found out about a a left-wing member of the court, uh, you have no... If they're Republicans, just call him Mitch McConnell. If they're Republicans, they'll act like Mitch McConnell. Yeah. In the final year of Obama's administration, they said, oh, we can't consider a Supreme Court justice in the final year. But when it came time for Donald Trump's final year, hell, it was the final three months they considered a Supreme Court justice. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. What's good for the goose is not necessarily good for the gander. I mean, there have been members of Congress 
who were either forced out or went to prison for far less than than this. Yeah. You know, I think I time. think I think Bob Nay here from Ohio, you know, he ended up going to prison for taking some of that stuff from Jack Abramoff, you know, most specifically this very lavish golf trip that was only like 10 days in Ireland or something like that. But it was a lavish trip. I mean, it was, you know, 10 days of these huge fancy hotels and golf and all this stuff. So it added up to a heck of a lot of money, you know, seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 or whatever. Mm -hmm. And he didn't disclose that. He was convicted on that on that charge and went, and went to prison. I mean, he wasn't just pushed out of Congress. He went to prison. Yeah. Um, you know, Jim Trafficking, I think, had the, a, you know, I mean, there, there have been members of Congress who did not disclose the exact same type of stuff mm -hmm. who were forced out of Congress and many of them were charged with federal crimes and a few of them went to prison yeah. for this exact type of stuff. By the way, so, let me just point out for a moment, we have Bree with us and he's in Malaysia and he's, what, you're not in Malaysia, where are you? Can't hear you. He's muted right now. You're muted. Hello? You're muted. He was driving five minutes ago. Was he? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but you, you got him. That's it. You know, that's the trouble with doing it on your iPhone. This is so small that you got to hit everything right. And look, we just lost him. Completely froze up. That's nice artwork, though, isn't it? Is it a building? Seems as though there's a lot of Supreme Court justices that uh, they get tri trips. Looks like they declare them. Uh, yeah, well, he, but it's declaring them, uh, and he didn't declare these things, Phil. Yeah, I don't. I, I can't say why he did or he didn't. Well, I can but, say why he didn't. What about Jenny Thomas and her consulting fees that Roger Stone arranged? Well, that's you know. It, she was working for Hunter Biden. Uh, in, uh, yeah, that's not a joke, Bill. It, it seems like Ruth Bader Ginsburg had 14 trips just in 2018. But did she report? How do we know it? How do we, how do we know it? Well, because I'm, I'm reading it off a site called... Yeah, but well, how did we find out about it? It's because, because she, repo she reported it. She reported she disclosed it. Them. She disclosed it. Right. Now, one of them was paid. Uh, she went as a tourist and guest of Israeli billionaire Morris Khan. Mm -hmm. um, Khan had business before the Supreme Court before. Uh, um, but not when she took the trips. No, af after uh, before she took the trips and mm -hmm. she took the trip a after. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, there's... Uh, but she Bill, reading his arguments live is just riveting. Yeah, it's riveting yeah, because uh, what he does is, no, what happens is he goes online, he finds something to make uh, to make his case, and he doesn't even know what he's reading. He's just reading it. Uh, now, Breyer served on the Pritzker jury. <laughs> oh, still keep can, you mute him? Around program. can you mute him? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let him keep talking. It's just... <laughs> Yeah, hey, look, I, I got some nice things I was doing beforehand. I just figured I'd get on, but uh, there's a show I was really enjoying, so you you guys enjoy. <laughs> oh, come on, Phil. Oh, Phil come gets on. irritated oh, when no. we don't. Oh. Uh, you know, I, I don't need it. No, don't you know? leave us, Phil. You joined us. Don't leave. We're just joking with you, Phil. All right. Hey, I, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to uh, cause any of you libs to, you know, to get... <laughs> You know, uh, oh no, no, we all right. I'm going. I, I don't want to get you upset. I'll leave. Listen, if you leave, we're gonna have to beat up on <laughs> we're gonna have to beat up on Vernon, and I don't want to have to do that. Yeah, know. am I single to mile? Can't we all get along? Yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, uh, <laughs> hey, Bree, are you celebrating single to mile over there? Yeah, yeah he, he said, so. he, he said where he's eating and stuff is very loud, so he hasn't got his microphone on. Oh, okay, yeah. Steve Fox is watching. Oh, he's a, oh. You're in Japan. See, he's a, he's a spy. I'm telling you, he's now, a spy. Bree, why were you driving in Japan? First of all, it looked like the steering wheel was on the left-hand side, not the right. And uh, you were in a car. Were you a passenger or were you the driver? <laughs> well, you're, you're not very observant. So because he was on the right. Uh, it was on the I right. Was seated, yes, I was seated in the passenger. 
in the back passenger left. I wouldn't sit behind the driver. And I got out on the left. Okay. Okay. Observation is not Phil's high point. Well, you know, it was it was interesting. Come on, Alan, don't talk like that. He's going to leave the show. Yeah. No. We don't yeah. want to. Yeah, I <laughs> yeah, I stick up for you, Phil. I love you. You're so red I... today, Phil. Hmm? And, and as I said earlier, the thing that really was interesting today also was the they released the deposition of uh, Donald Trump in that trial in New York against yeah. this woman. I mean, this woman is going against him. Uh, and uh, it, he was justifying his whole remark about, you know, grabbing him by the pussy. And what made me mad was they're talking about on MSNBC, and it's a female host, and she's saying, uh, and he was talking about grabbing a woman between her legs or down there. But she never could bring herself to say pussy. And quite frankly, if you're going to say how disgusting it was what he said, you don't say he said that he could put his hands down there. No, it's not what he said. And then as they're, as they're talking about it, they're showing on screen the deposition, right? And they have a crawl going of what he's saying. And when it comes to the word pussy, the word pussy comes up on the screen. And I'm going... You know, don't, don't, uh, what you're doing is you're sanitizing it. That's for the hearing impaired. Yeah. Well, it's also the sexually impaired who don't know what a <laughs> pussy is. But, I mean, just, I mean, um, I just was amazed at how stupid he was in a deposition. Did you hear any of those things, Josh? No. no. I didn't you, hear any of that. No, well, when you hear it, you'll go, is this man an absolute moron? I mean, you go in for a deposition and you watch everything you say. And he was didn't care. He even took on her yes. lawyer. He yelled at him and calling him a fake and a, a liar. And, a, you know, you don't do that. You do the deposition. You give the best answers you possibly can. And then you leave. Yes, Alan. I, I think he feels he's going to lose. And would rather just pay and move on. Well, how much is she suing him for? A million? A million. Nothing to him. Uh, what do you mean? That's I haven't a, heard. I, this, he'll he'll, he'll I, ask I, Bill to send 100000 and I don't know. I think that's a lot more money th to him than you think it is. Okay. You know? What is that? My Trump pen. Oh, I thought it was like... Uh, I will be... I don't After know that, all the copy I sent Tony, he never sent me. I one. don't know that God <laughs> ever created a president. I, I just my my thinking on the whole deal. But uh, boy, a, a very nice looking woman there in the back of Bree in that restaurant. I'm just, I'm yeah, just slide over Bree. Just slide over Bree. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, you don't. You look like you don't have much hair there. In where that where restaurant. are you? Are you in Malaysia? Where are you? Oh, you're in Japan now, right? You're you're in Japan. It's better that we don't get into that. Let's just talk about Clarence Thomas and Ed, Ed Sheeran won his case. So uh, Marvin Gaye, I guess his uh, estate is sad today. Let's talk about topical issues, not where I am in the world. Not where you are in the world. Oh, okay. <laughs> Why? Nobody's supposed to, well, Of course, you're a spy. Nobody's supposed no, to know where right. you do, are. Do not incriminate yourself. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> so who 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 nominated Claire? What president nominated Claire? Uh, uh, that, was, uh, that was under... H.W. Bush. H.W. Bush, yeah. Because I remember that you, who who was the uh, who was the guy one of the guys on the committee I think the head of the committee wasn't he Joe Biden was Joe Biden mm -hmm. on the confirmation in the confirmation hearings and that's when what's her name got up and uh, said all that stuff about how he treated Anita Hill Anita Hill yeah, uh, about the, uh, the hair on the coke can yeah and all well, kinds but it, it, these were statements that were like made her uncomfortable okay. Yeah. And Isn't that the president um, who makes that decision? Huh? No. Well, it has Thomas. to be affirmed by the by the Senate. Right. 
Oh, it does. Okay. Yeah, right. that, it has. But how to, about if you want to kick them out? Then it's the. It has right? to be done by. It has to be done. Starts in the uh, in the in the Congress law. where they impeach him, and impeaching is the is actually uh, they say oh he's been impeached oh that means you know. no all impeaching means is he's been indicted, and then the trial takes place in the Senate. <coughs> Okay, so if they want to get, and correct me if I'm wrong, Josh, if they want to get rid of a Supreme Court justice, they have to go through the impeachment process, don't they? I don't. Uh, yeah, short of him res, uh, resigning or or dying in office, uh, that's the case. Yeah. Yeah. Ask can Josh. They get rid of a, uh, uh, can they get rid of a Supreme Court justice through impeachment? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's the only remedy other than them leaving voluntarily. Yeah, and I don't think there's any chance that Clarence Thomas plans on leaving voluntarily. And and what cause, uh, no. uh, Josh? What cause can they use for impeachment of a, a Supreme Court justice? Well, some impropriety. Well, Let, whatever uh, they whatever they want. For I mean, sake of know. argument, for sake of argument, let's say a Supreme Court justice kills somebody. Uh, right. All right. There you go. Ethics violations. Ethics there violations. Three yeah. is. Uh, Chiming in for that. Yeah, but there are no set of ethics. They've never set the bar. Am I right, Josh? For ethics for Supreme they, Court? They don't really have a clear cut ethics, no. I mean constitutionally they're they're appointed to serve for life and uh I believe the phrase is enduring good behavior. So what's good behavior, right? Well that's in up for interpretation who who should interpret who has the right to interpret it well the legislative branch i wonder the what, congress of yeah, the united states i wonder yeah. what's going on behind the scenes though i wonder if john roberts hasn't had a talk with clarence thomas about this well i mean he's pretty dedicated to the institution and i think people are wearing thin that he hasn't done anything but the thing is and I would agree with that, okay? But we also don't know that he hasn't done anything at all, and we also don't know that he hasn't done anything yet. In other words, Justice Roberts, Chief Justice Roberts, is not the type to go out and say to the cameras, oh, I'm, I'm working on this and I'll have something for you on it soon. He would not say anything until it was until he was done, mm -hmm. until he was... In other words, if he's going to institute a code of ethics for the court voluntarily without waiting on Congress to pass one and all that, he's not going to say, oh, yeah, I'm working on it. You know, it's going to be 20 pages and I'm on page nine and I'll probably work on it some next Saturday and all that. He's not really going to do that. I mean, if you think that he should, fine. You know, everyone operates on their own, but that's just how he operates. Could he? I, I don't it, could could he? Could, could he know, just write a code? Could he write a code of ethics, and not have to have it passed by anybody in particular? Yeah, I, I think as the chief justice, I mean, he has power. I, I think that you know there could be an agreement among the justices if they wanted, and, and as the chief justice, he could he could implement, you know, some policies and procedures. I mean, I think you could probably get some argument over it or or, or whatever, because again, not. All of this stuff is clearly spelled out constitutionally. Now, it's fairly well spelled out uh, for federal judges mm -hmm. uh, in the lower courts because Congress has previously passed laws that govern those courts as they have the right to do. And they do have ethics codes, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Chief Justice could just simply choose to say this court is now going to begin to follow that set of criteria we're going to make ourselves, you know to that if he wants to take any and all uh garbage out of it he could simply go to congress and ask congress would you please codify this and and make my court a part of it and we'll pledge to follow it and we'll and then we'll be required to by law and he could you know he could sort of campaign to have that done and you know, I don't, you know, I mean, he, he's not going to, you know, get political with it, but he might, you know, go on 60 Minutes and explain why he wanted to do it in a nice way or, you know, something like that. I, I mean, that's what I'm saying, but I don't, 
you're not going to get a lot out of yeah, but it's been. It's I, I, I would imagine it's driving him crazy because oh, I'm, he, I'm he sure is. Yeah. He I is can. a very. He, in spite of what I think of him, you know, I, it doesn't adhere mm. to my politics. I do think he is pretty much a very principled guy. Oh, I think he and, is, and, 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 and would like very... to see the court keep its reputation, which has been yeah. deeply soiled by this incident. Yeah. You know. I mean, yeah, and I don't, I don't think that he likes that or that he's happy about that at all, in the least. Um, I, I mean, I think he's hurt by it, and I think he's concerned. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, some people that would hear me say, well, then why isn't he doing anything? Well, uh, you're right. I'm not disputing that. But maybe he is doing something, and maybe well, it's not Well, uh, Bree held up a note of his that said he hopes, you know, he's doing nothing and hopes it will blow over. And I don't think this is blowing over anytime soon because I think they recently took a survey to see how people look at the Supreme Court, and they've had the lowest polling numbers they've ever had because the Supreme Court usually was always looked upon in a very lofty manner. But why would they care what their polling numbers are? Well, they don't care because they, I don't, they, they've I don't got— think he does. Secondly, they've got the job for goddamn life. Right. You know, yeah. and that's, that's another thing that's wrong. I mean, well, I don't, I don't, I don't think that he cares about polls, but I, I do think that he has concern <laughs> or cares about whether or not the public at large respects the court mm -hmm. and thinks of the court in a positive way and believes that the court is a, is a, a positive contributor to the lives of Americans in a fair way. You know, and, and I think that because I think Justice Chief Justice Roberts is a decent person, and I think that he cares about mm -hmm. Americans and America, mm -hmm. and you know our way of lives, uh, way of life here, and our our policies and institutions and rights. I mean, I don't think he's a you know nefarious individual or anything like that. Yeah, I mean, I'm not I'm not heaping praise on him or anything. I'm just saying I, I think he's a a decent person. Like I think Joe Biden is a decent person you know like i mean you know and other people you know so and like like donald trump is a decent wait a minute no um, i won't go that, that far. one's I'm questionable sorry. but but you know so, i mean i think he has concern about that I, I don't think he wants to retire or die in 20 years and this kind of stuff is still going on i i think he would like to be remembered as not only as a keeper of the court but as someone who confronted some of its huge challenges in an ultra-political yeah. period. Well, you know, we're, yeah. it's We've, a work in progress. We're running out of time here, but we first have to guess what Bree is eating for lunch. What are you eating for Thumbs. lunch, Bree? Turn on your mic. Can you turn on your mic? Well, I don't know what that is. That looks like some kind of Asian slurry. Our no, it's sushi. Uh, is it su sushi? What is it? It's sushi? Well, it's Second it's somebody's tongue. Wait, 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 what what is it? Oh, okay. All right. Well, eat it and enjoy yourself. Because I just wanted to show everybody something I saw. It was pretty scary on the on the show from last night before I was on. What is that? That's you, Alex. That's what? your living room. Oh, oh, oh! That was the that was the when I was showing somebody how you use the uh, effects and how. Is to that get what happens when I'm not on the show first thing? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I thought I'd do that. Anyway, hey, listen. Nice, nice little show tonight. Thank you, Brian. Appreciate it as always. Thank Adrian for dropping by, and uh, oh, there she is. Oh, there she's waving goodbye. <laughs> she's funny. Uh, she makes you laugh, right? Yeah. All the time. Yeah. Yeah. Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't say wave yet. Uh, uh, well, I, uh, anyway, uh, thank you, Jeff. Thank you to Josh. Josh, always a pleasure talking with you. You give us a perspective uh, that we need, sorely need. Um, um, Alan, oh. thank you. I'll let you go now because you got a show to produce. Uh, <laughs> let's uh, go to uh, Vernon Nunn and say goodbye. And Kevin, bye to you too. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, there's there's Phil. 
Thank you, Phil. We appreciate it. We appreciate. No it. problem. Just remember, I was a paid producer. You were a paid producer <laughs> for arm wrestlers. <laughs> yeah, for arm wrestlers. <laughs> Come on, th- Alan. Get better. And thanks to Bree as well. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. Are you gonna wave, Adrian? Wave, wave a lot. There we go. See you later, everybody. Anyway, that's them. That's me, and that's the show for tonight. Jack Bishop is next. He's going to be here with the intersection, uh, and he'll you can, he's going to be taking your calls on Skype at GabNet Live. I'll see you again on Monday with the pop-up show on Facebook at four in the afternoon Eastern time, and then next Wednesday, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. Okay, bye bye, everybody.